The difference between the destructive and constructive uses of fission is a matter of control. And just exactly what are we controlling? The progression of the nuclear reaction itself. See, when an atom is split, it not only releases energy, but a few neutrons as well. Those neutrons speed along till some of them hit the nuclei of other atoms, which in turn release more stray neutrons, which then hit other nuclei, which spray out more neutrons, which smash into other nuclei, which... I caught the drift of what the prof was saying. Fission can start a chain reaction, sort of like my domino structure, only a lot more random. Could I build a model to demonstrate what a nuclear chain reaction is like? It will need to show how each released neutron can trigger the release of several more neutrons so that the bombardment of atoms grows exponentially. No problem. I gathered the supplies and Professor Z kindly put together our chain reaction machine. We used mouse traps to represent atoms and ping pong balls for neutrons. We needed enough of each to cover the bottom of a clear container that was a little larger than a square meter. The mouse traps have a spring on them that snaps shut when it senses motion. Poor mice. Fortunately, we only needed to use ping pong balls in the name of science. Professor Z carefully placed a ball on the spring of each trap. The balls would be flung out like neutrons when the mousetrap atoms were bombarded. When everything was ready, Professor Z tossed in the first neutron and set my ping pong ball chain reaction in action. Whoa, let's see that again. Our chain reaction slowed to a stop after all the traps had been sprung. But it was easy to see how atoms, constantly splitting and firing off more neutrons at each other, could go on indefinitely. Once it got going, my chain reaction seemed to have a life of its own. I thought it'd be pretty difficult to control. But Professor Z showed me that by changing the conditions, it was possible to control the chain reaction. 